Hey guys, so today I read in Matthew 16 and Mark 8. It's been a minute uh, since I've been on here, but um, really interesting. So the, the two passages, they really align pretty closely with each other uh, in terms of the information that's shared. But uh, what really stuck out to me today was the um, very end of both chapters. Jesus said that, well, it says, um, then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. But what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? And what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the son of man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his father. And then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly, I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of God coming in his kingdom. Um, and so kind of ignore that last verse. That's for another conversation. But um, so the, what's interesting about this is that um, Jesus calls himself the Son of Man. And that's actually, um, I believe it's it's the referent he uses most often to describe himself. And whenever we hear the Son of Man just from an intellectual perspective, we're tending to think, okay, son of man versus like son of God. So like son of man is like the the humble human title and son of God is like the holy, like he's like Jesus, like the Christ, the son, the, the one who is God himself uh, become man, right? But that's actually not true. Um, so the term son of God is used several times throughout many different cultures in history, even like Pharaoh in Egypt, he was referred to as the son of God. Um, and so that doesn't mean that he's like his biological child, but that he is a representative of God on earth. And so they would believe that the Pharaoh gets his power from um, a God or from the gods in Egypt. And so he is given authority over his country, which is under the authority of one of the, the Elohim. Um, and so he would have been given that authority by that Elohim in order to govern and steward it, maybe even expand or do whatever. And so when Jesus calls himself the son of God, he's kind of saying that he's been given authority by God to be the leader that he's been called to be uh, in the same way that other cultures would do. When he says son of man, though, that's a very different title, right? So we see here in Daniel uh, chapter seven, starting in verse nine, I watched as thrones were put in place and the ancient one sat upon, oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading out of the wrong version. Um, as I looked in, in the ESV, um, as I looked, uh, Daniel seven, verse nine, thrones were placed and the ancient of days took his seat. His clothing was white as snow and the hair of his head was, um, his hair, the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames. Its wheels were burning fire. A th uh, sorry, a stream of fire issued and came out from before him. A thousand thousands served him and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The court sat in judgment and the books were opened. I looked at then and because of the sound of the great words that the horn uh, was speaking. And as I looked, the beast was killed and its body destroyed and given over to be burned with fire. As for the rest of the beasts, their dominion was taken away, but their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. So then in verse 13, here it is. Um, I saw in the night visions and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man. And he came to the ancient of days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples and nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed. So Jesus, this is one of the reasons that everybody was so um, offended by him uh, in, the, in the religious community was that Jesus is saying that that son of man, that that being that stands in the presence of God, which is impossible for any human being, right? That is who I am. He is the one. Um, because they would look at that and probably think, oh, it's some kind of angelic being um, or or the Messiah, right? Who was an angelic, you know, or not, not angelic, but he was, he was from God. Um, and so very, very interesting that he's like, hey, so that's me. Um, the arguably <laughs> most powerful being a, a, apart from the ancient one in the universe. Um, is standing in front of these, you know, the, um, if you do the math, it's at least a hundred million angels just lined up ready to go and fight. Um, and yet it says even without fighting that 
um, suddenly the, the great beast is destroyed. Um, and so we find out later how that happens. Um, so stay tuned. But um, so Jesus is saying, this is me. Um, I am God. I am also the son of man who is um, a being in close relationship and proximity to God, something that no one else is, is capable of. And that I have the authority and the power and the privilege, the right to take everything over. Um, to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom and, you know, everyone, all peoples, languages, nations would serve him um, with an everlasting kingdom. And so this is insane. Like what he's saying is, you know, um, heresy for, for these people listening to him because they don't think that he's capable of being um, from God. And so, um, yeah, it's just, it's just incredibly powerful, uh, the statement that he's making. But all of that to say that, you know, he, he connects this to this message saying that anyone who would choose to try and save his life will lose it. Those who seek me, who trust in me, will find it, right? And so he's saying that I am the one you should serve. You shouldn't try to serve your own life. Um, you know, you should serve the one who has dominion in an everlasting kingdom um, and, and the power to give you eternal life and eternal joy and peace and hope and life and, and happiness and love. Um, and so, you know, seek me, find me, right? And so we see that um, in his presence, in the presence of Jesus and in the Father, uh, the ancient one, um, there is a holy entourage. 